bienvenidos guys welcome and welcome back so today i got in or not today but i got in the navac uh flare tool the battery powered one and then i claimed my uh gauges so let's take a look at them i'll show you what the gauges look like uh what they offer and then as far as this i know i'm late to the game but um i had those or I had that gift card thanks to Chris from HVACR Videos. Good looking out, man. And uh, I am gonna start using flared dryers mostly because of him. Uh, you know, they're easier to, to put in and, and remove and replace when I'm not doing a uh, brazing or a job where I have to braze. If I don't have to braze anything, if we're fixing something else, I can go in there with a flared dryer and do it easier, easier and quicker, so. That's why I got this one. They also have a bender and a swage uh, tool kit, power, battery powered that I'm like super interested in, but you know, we gotta pace ourselves one tool at a time. So let me show you how this works. Let's make a few flares. Let's test it out, see how good it is. And then I'm gonna do a manual flare as well. And we'll see, you know, does it compare? Are they the same? Is it that much better? Or is it just, you know, quicker and more convenient? All right, so let's go ahead and get to opening these. Now, this is a uh, June promotion. So hopefully by the time you guys are seeing this, you know, within the week that this video is out, you can kind of cash in on this too. You can buy any of their battery powered uh, tools, which is gonna be the flare, the swaging uh, tool and the, uh, the bender. So they have a, a battery powered version of each one, the flare, the bender and the swaging tool. And uh, the cool thing is the batteries are interchangeable. So if you get into that whole ecosystem, uh, even uh, some of the, like I have the, the hydraulic swage and they told me those heads will fit on the power one. I think you might need an adapter or something. And what you do end up getting for free is these uh, precision impact resistant manifold gauges. So these are the N2A4. Now, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna have everything that I need right out the bat, but you know, that's what we have PT charts for. Oh yeah, it says right here, R22, 410A, 134A, and 404. That's actually not bad. I didn't know I had 404 in it. So got these little handles here and uh, super tough built. And that's gonna replace the set that I have right here. Old school yellow jacket with the H c pro gauges that i got so you know we got that so here we have the uh the tool the power tool itself so we're gonna have this is uh the unit pretty pretty lightweight and compact does come with the uh two amp hour battery now these are the ones that you can use across all their power tools so let's load this up and uh, you can see right there that the battery is full. It goes in increments of 25. There's a light there, so if you need that extra light there when you're working. And then we have all these uh, sizes over here, right? So we got our half inch, three eighths, five eighths, quarter, and three quarters. So if you got a flare, I mean, I'm mostly going to be using the 3.8s to be honest. But if you need a flare or anything, that's your set right there. Here's the uh, charger. So pretty compact, lightweight. Oh, and under that, you got the uh, flare gauge. So you should be able to see if you have a perfect flare, and you should get a perfect flare every time. All right, and if you're curious about the gauges, let me just open that up so I can set these up for myself already. So nice case too. Bam. So there we have the uh, Navac impact resistant uh, gauges. So yeah, they, they cram all that in there. Now they're not color coded, but it gives it a nice uh, aesthetic if it's not color coded. 
All right, so I put my hoses on there. That, that layout's gonna get some getting used to because they put it on the sides there, but yeah, you got the uh, 410, then R22, 134, and then 404 at the very middle. All right, so let's prep a piece of 3 8 pipe. It's gonna be scrap uh, copper. So let's see, let's make a flare with the tool. So here's our uh, 3 8 Of course, we wanna ream it. This reamer and uh, tube cutter you see in the video is gonna be from their tool kit on the uh, hydraulic swage uh, tool that I have from them. So the cool thing is this thing has a stopper so you know every time exactly how far to put the pipe in. And then you're just gonna push it back but even when you just slide this into the uh, machine, the tool, it actually pushes that lever up for you anyway so it's not in the way because that's where it's gonna make the flare. All right, and just a little uh, heads up, uh, if Navec you know, was sponsoring or, or had sent this out to me, they would have been upset with me because I managed to screw up the flare. Um, this is a sizing gauge, you know, that, that when you pass, it's not supposed to pass through, there's a lip there. So this is the one that I had made the first time, but I, I kind of wiggled it and I moved it around and then I was like, oh, it's probably still in place. And it wasn't. So if I throw it in here, it actually, uh, if I put it in there, it, it falls through. I messed up the first one. So then I had to redo it. So here it is being redone. All right, so we got it in there, clamped in. Like I said, when you push it in, the lever will get out of the way. And all you're gonna do is clamp down that little piece at the bottom, like that lever, a huge lever, the silver one. And there's a button in there. You're gonna push the button and then let it do its thing. So once, that, once it cycles, it's gonna go all the way in and all the way out. You're gonna pull that lever out and it's gonna unlock it, you're gonna take it out, and then you're just gonna remove the clamp. There is your flare. Pretty damn good flare. Very clean, nice and shiny. This is a really old piece of scrap pipe, so it did a pretty good job. Now, like I was saying, I have the, the tips and tricks, right? Uh, if you're gonna go out and cut off the flare, like you messed it up, or you forgot to put the nut on the copper line, it happens to the best of us, you can cut off just the flare like I've shown here. So you're going to, on the Navac one that I showed in the video, uh, they have three rollers that go across. So you just put it in the gaps, right? And that gap allows that flare to fit in there and for it to grab the pipe and then be able to cut as close as it can, just the very tip of it and a, a hair into the pipe. So that's a very close cut. And uh, you can achieve that with the Navac one. You can achieve it with a lot of these uh, these style of tube cutters, right? The huge ones. A lot of us have the silver one with the blue handle. I don't remember what the brand is, but you see how there's a gap right there? You're going to put your flare in that gap right there, and that's where it holds it. And then from there, like I said, you just tighten it, and it fits in there perfectly. So this one is spring loaded, so let's get it on there and it comes off, right? And there it is again. So if you screw up, you forget the nut, something like that, you can uh, cut off just the end right there. So I hope that helps. So yeah, we're in the middle of a heat wave and my phone is not cooperating. It's like, yeah, after a minute, can't take the heat. So, uh, okay, so now we have the flaring block, right? So the manual way, the old school way, is to use a uh, flaring block. You can also do your swages with this kit. Uh, I used to have a yellow jacket, lost it, but you know, here's the kit. This one is a two-in-one, so you have all your sizes etched there. And all you're gonna do is put the piece of pipe in and then clamp it down. So you're gonna use these little uh, knobs here, I don't know what you call them, little handles, uh, and you tighten down the copper in there. Now. What I was always told, or what I've always done, is a coin depth, right? So it's gonna be sticking out just a coin depth. So like a penny, you're gonna have that much clearance above the block, like sticking out. Because the rest of it gets uh, pressed into that little cone, 
that's there and that makes your flare. So you're gonna use that and you'll have a perfect flare every time if you're doing it manually. Now, I swear it was like something that was told to me by like uh, one of my teachers, you know, in, in school, because we did all this stuff in class and I'm more than sure they told us, you know, a coin depth and it's perfect every time. I will compare it to the, uh, you know, the one that we got out of the Navac, you know, automatic battery powered one. And you're gonna see that they're pretty identical. So once you have everything, you know, set in the way you want it to, of course you wanna put a little uh, oil on it uh, just to lubricate it. Uh, you don't have to, but it reduces the cracking drastically. Uh, that's the way they always taught us, you know, dab a little on there. I kind of put a little a bit too much, but that'll keep uh, it from cracking and it can help you if you're having issues with your swaging uh, tools. Uh, if they crack on you, especially the, the smaller piping, uh, try putting some oil on it and it'll help reduce that a lot. So here you put the cone on there, the flaring cone, and then it just gets pressed down. So you're gonna crank it all the way down as much as you can. And then uh, once you know it kind of stops, then you're gonna undo it. Give it a little bit of force, but you're gonna undo it. And then there is our perfect flare. You know, you undo it and you take it out. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty identical to the, uh, the one that I did with the Navac. And like I said, I'll compare it right now, but that is the manual way to do it, the old school way and the way I was doing it. All right, so the one on the left is my manual flare. And the one on the uh, right is the Navac one from the uh, battery powered flaring tool. To me, they are pretty identical. You can kind of see that this one's a little cleaner because it has, uh, you know, more of it makes contact and it's continuously spinning, but they are pretty identical. And then if we put them side by side for you guys. Don't they look exactly the same? Pretty cool that I'm able to do a manual flare exactly the, like a machine. So pretty cool. And of course the flaring gauge, if we put mine, it sits in the lip and it will not come through. Perfect flare according to Navac. And then the Navac one here, same, right? Perfect flare made by their machine to, to, you know, pass their test. It goes in the flaring gauge perfectly, but so does mine. So that was the one I did my, by hand, came out perfect. Um, I used to do them all the time because we used to have to make flares for service ports, you know, the, the service valves that rotor lock uh, compressors and all that kind of stuff. You have to hook up a flare nut to hook up your copper to your uh, service valve. So we used it there. And then we also, every now and then we'd have like um, connections, whether it's like a dryer or something like that. And yeah, it's as simple as that. So. Just a little comparison, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, I bought this more for convenience, right? I can do it manually, it's not that big of a deal, but for you guys that do mini splits, you do a lot of flare dryers. Like I said, I think those are easy to change out. I got that from Chris, Chris's channel. Uh, uh, if you guys do a lot of these, you know, service valves that require a copper uh, flare nut to hook it up to, you're gonna need or you're gonna find convenience in a tool like this because doing it manually, especially if you're doing it over and over and over, really sucks. So I was okay with it for the longest time because I wasn't, I used it a lot when I started. Like I said, for those uh, rotor locks uh, or service ports that were like those stainless steel valves that you had to connect it to, it was threaded. And that was the only way you could put a, uh, your copper line to it. So I would use it for that. And now I want to use it for, for dryers to easily change them out when I'm not brazing. If we're replacing like a Cormax or something else that, that we're uh, opening the, 
the system or recovering refrigerant and we need to just charge it up with new refrigerant but we got to change that dryer we don't want to bring our torches all the way up uh, there's going to be this solution or there's going to be the press solution i think this is a little bit better you can undo it and change out that dryer as many times as you need to and uh, you know not ever have to take your torches up so uh, i think it's pretty cool i like that the little uh, clamp has the built-in stopper that way you don't kind of you don't screw up it's i mean i know i did the first time but you know you live and learn that's why i practiced on a scrap piece of uh, copper line i didn't want to waste my good you know copper roll on this but uh, the clamps are really cool and then like with anything you can double check um, your flare or any flare that you have and uh, you know they fit perfectly even mine on the um, on the flare uh, the male end right you're gonna put that on there and that is a perfect flare every time if you want to know how to make a perfect manual flare you know like I said refer to what I said about when I did mine it's a coin depth you're gonna look imagine you have a penny or if you have a penny or some sort of pen, uh, coin on you that is the depth if you're using a flaring block to have sticking out and you get it perfect every time I swear and then uh, if you ever screw up that's what these notches in the tube cutters are for you can put your flare in there and it, it'll cut off just the flare don't waste a lot of copper you know don't waste an inch or two trying to cut behind the flare you know hope that uh that helps you guys uh like i said this is a june promotion so if you guys are thinking about it and you or you bought one recently uh claim those free gauges those are pretty sweet and like i said they're gonna get some getting used to because they're not um mounted the same as all, a lot of the other ones it's front and back this one has the storage is on the sides which is a little easier when you're actually out there working on stuff and you can take them on and off without having to flip it over or reach behind it but it's gonna like i said take take getting used to uh it's a different setup I, they carry you can carry them the same way i i put them over my shoulder and it worked out fine so uh those are my new heavy duty gauges there on my backup analogs i think we all need backup analogs you can you know debate digital versus analogs all day long i prefer digital now especially you know within the past year or so i've, I've really really uh used those heavily and they're super convenient my digital s mans and my field piece probes that's what i prefer but sometimes you just want to grab the analogs you know check a system top it off or you know, you uh, don't want to use your phone or, or anything like that. You can grab the analogs and those are always going to work. They don't need batteries. They don't need any of that. They don't need to be recharged. They will work no matter what. So if anything, at least have them as a backup. Uh, you should always have more than one option. Even if you have two analog sets or digital and a backup analog, always have options. You never know what can happen. You might break them. You might drop them you know, might run out of batteries if it's digital. So uh, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope to help someone and uh, yeah. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys.